The new Ford Focus ST, supposedly an everyday sports car. A turbocharged engine, performance that nibbles at a Porsche Boxster's heels, and all the comfort of a family hatchback. It has the potential to shoot straight to the top of the hot hatch class, so requires a very special test. Welcome to Norway. We've trekked six hours north of Oslo to this, the Trollstigen. This place translates to the Trolls Road, so I can only presume that trolls are petrol heads as well. It's an immaculate ribbon of tarmac. It took eight years to build. It's got 11 hairpins, and it rises one kilometre in elevation. So if you've got a list of roads to drive in your lifetime, this has got to be on there. It's the perfect place to give the ST a workout. Its tight twist will test the handling, and its steep climb will test the power. So, ladies and gents, we're on one of the greatest driving roads in the world, and I'm in what professes to be one of the greatest hot hatches ever made. We ought to go for a drive, shall we? Yes, let's. The last ST was famous for the charismatic growl of its five-cylinder 2.5-litre engine. Worryingly, though, this new version's motor is smaller. Under the bonnet, you've got a two-litre, four-cylinder EcoBoost engine. So that's Eco standing for economy, Boost standing for turbo, I presume. And what Ford have done is they've worked exceptionally hard to mop up the tears of people who are mourning the loss of the five-cylinder engine because the five-cylinder always has that distinctive warble. Now you've got this almost old-school induction noise that sounds a bit like an old Escort Mexico or something. You can't hear any turbo swirl. It's just that <laughs> I do quite like it. And thanks to the turbo, the new engine is now 30 horsepower more powerful than its bigger predecessor. Top speed is 154 miles per hour. I think this car is a bit just mad and a bit straight from the word go. All it ever wants to do, it just wants to take off the whole time. When you really get on it in the ST, the thing that surprises me more than anything is the fact that it gets massive torque steer, even in the dry. This is a dry part of the road. OK, I've got traction control on. It's pulling me that way. The steering wheel's trying to pull me that way afterwards. It's so strange. When the camber of the road alters, the car's being very snatchy-snatchy. Goodness gracious me, if it's like this in the dry, in the wet, it's going to be a bit of a handful. Oh, the sheep in the road, brilliant. It's what you want on a mountain pass, isn't it? A flock of confused sheep. Dude, this is not the place to walk. The Focus ST wades into the ring with some very heavy hitters. Volkswagen's Golf GTI and Sirocco, Renault's Megane Sport 265 and Vauxhall's venerable VXR Astra. It costs at least £3,000 less than every single one of them. But I have an issue with the styling. The biggest problem I have is a concern here because the Ford Focus ST is not available in anything other than a five-door or an estate. And it doesn't matter how loud you paint it, it still looks too much like a family car and not enough like a sports car. And every single one of its competitors just looks better. We're on a very smooth road now, so I'm probably feeling the car at its best. The front end is absolutely planted. You'd be very hard pushed to get massive understeer from this. You'll feel the back starting to lift and get light, but it doesn't ever feel deadly. My favourite little bit, the natty detail that I personally love, is right here on the dash. You've got oil temperature, oil pressure, but right in the middle there, you've got an analogue turbo boost gauge, and it feels like you're in a proper sports car from the 80s, like an Integrale Lancia. When you really plant your foot, you see that turbo boost gauge spool right up. It's a bit schoolboy, but I like it. Focus ST is a very simple, organic hatchback. You just enjoy it. 
There was a very real danger that by losing one whole cylinder and half a litre of cc, the new ST would wilt in the shadow of its predecessor. But we needn't have worried, because the new flavour car not only delivers on sheer affordability and extra power, but crucially, charisma. If only they made it in a three-door. This is the Duke R. A mutant prototype supercar from Nissan. There are only two in the world, and each cost nearly half a million pounds to build. All right, breathe. Say quick prayer. On his lap, Karun had to decide exactly how much throttle to apply. On my lap, the car was doing it for me. So I'm putting my foot down a little. 